Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Welcome and thank you so very much for joining me. Today I'm sharing my process video. I shared with you my No Paper Left Behind update for coffee for the month of February. And I said that if you wanted to see the process video, let me know. So what I did was I took two hours of video and sped it up about six times. In a couple places I'm fussy cutting or dinking around and so I sped it up to 10 times just so you can see how I go about things. You'll notice that a lot of the things I do, I batch. I don't do one card at a time. So when I take a 12 by 12 sheet of paper and cut it, I'm cutting it enough to make the, what is it, six or eight cards that it makes. That's why right now I should be cutting that paper, not at four inches, but I should be cutting it at five and a quarter. So those cups make vertical cards. And I talked about that in my other video, but just to give you an idea, it's faster, but if you did one card at a time, you know, they might turn out better, but let's, let's face it. I have tons of paper and I have fun. And sometimes I just like to see how many cards can I make in a couple hours and time myself. Then I flip them all over and I'm coming in with the Tuesday morning white tape that I like. I like the quarter inch because it's quick to work with. The eighth inch is kind of hard for me to hang on to and the half inch is more than you need to hold cards together. Then I'm using like a scraper tool that came from Ranger. It, I think there are different versions like to clean your glass mat with is really what it's for. Gretchen of Cat and Paws got something at Walmart in like the body shop Bondo area and she uses it kind of in the same way. It, it's not a fancy thing. I mean, it's like a 50 cent or $1 item. And then I just peel all the tape off. I tried, I don't know if I edited it out. I don't remember seeing it actually in editing, but if I peel the tape off of more than one card at a time, they end up sticking together. That card has purple tape on it because I know it's not the same dimensions as all the other ones. So I wanted to mark it. So when I go back to put everything through, I won't just lay it down assuming it has an eighth inch border because I've chopped it to a weird shape because it was crooked. So a bit of purple tape will remind me when I go to assemble. And I switch between cutters just based on whichever one's handy. And my green one does eighth inch marks. So sometimes I like to use that one. And I'm just cutting down the next ones. And I tried something a little different. As I was going through, you'll notice I'm cutting and tidying up my branding strips as I went through. Just because sometimes you think you have a three inch strip and then you grab it and go to use it and it's really only two and a half because of the brown branding strip when you flip it over. So I just thought I would tidy as I go. It's not normal for me, but it seems to be working out in this collection. And I'm looking at all these cut aparts and trying to decide. So what I decided was the black had cut aparts on the back, but there were a ridiculous amount of cut aparts and stickers. And the sentiments would have repeated and I wanted to have a bunch of cards. So I just made the decision and cut them up. When you have cut aparts, it doesn't mean that you have to use that side of the paper. You might look at them and say, I don't like those sentiments. And then you use the black and white stripe side. Also, you probably have black and white paper somewhere in your stash. So if it meant that much to you, you could just grab a different piece and use the cut aparts. And again, here, here's more coffee cups where I should have cut the shape of the paper the other way so it was narrow and tall, but that's all right. And I kept going back and forth looking at the cut aparts and the stickers because I was trying to figure it out. Here, this time I'm doing a little better job using the white tape and my black gadget. So what I'm doing is I'm using the, whatever the heck, the scraper to cut the tape. My nails are really damaged from shellac, plus I do tons of crafts. So it's quicker and you just tear the tape as you go. I mean, it's, it's pretty fast, super fast in six times, right? And then somewhere I got the idea to peel the white parts off of more than one card at a time, but then I bumped it, it stuck to another one and nearly destroyed two cards. So I do not recommend doing that. Don't batch the white strip removal. Do that one at a time. That Tuesday morning adhesive is sticky. So if it sticks to another piece of paper, there's no undo on that. You can't just gently peel it off and 
everybody goes home happy. So here I'm tidying up the branding strips. I'm throwing out the part I don't want because it doesn't have the print and I'm keeping the sections that have the print for scraps on these cards or when I get to the end maybe I'll make a scrap card base. Here I'm trying to figure out what am I going to do with these super tall cut aparts because there were a couple of them that I wanted so I measured and tried to figure out could I fit them on the face of an A2 card because if they're six inches you can't but if you can get it down to five and a half you could use the whole height of the card and cut it. So that's what I was looking at and dinking around with and trying to decide which ones I wanted to use. Then I used the rest of that black and white. Is that a buffalo check? I didn't use the cut aparts. I just used the black and white on the other side. So a couple of the cut aparts I wanted and then some of them I didn't. So you don't necessarily have to commit 100% to one side of the paper. You can grab it and use the other. Here there was a bunch of black and white or some floral. I'm really glad I went with the floral because another thing to consider is do you have too many directional papers in your collection? And had I gone with the black and white side, which I just didn't because I was looking for more color, it would have been directional because it had all those words on it. So I'm glad I didn't do that. I needed some that could be vertical or horizontal. At some point, I probably should have just cut some of these papers up and stopped staring at them. And here I'm trying to figure out, am I going to put the floral with a buffalo check? Heck yeah, turns out I am. And again, you can see I used the black thing to tear the tape. Much better for your nails. I got that from Gretchen, not me. Even if people don't make the same things that you like, you can still watch their videos and learn a ton from them. I, When I first started watching Gretchen, I just really liked her videos and... The journals she made, oh, that's where the two stuck together and it was a hot mess. It didn't occur to me. So that's why this piece of paper is smaller. Because I had to cut it down because when it stuck to the other one, I damaged the end of it and it had a big crinkle in it. So I just cut it shorter and then stuck it on. But when I first started watching Gretchen, I didn't really think I was going to make journals. I was just fascinated by her journals. But I still learned paper crafting techniques, you know different gadgets that people use or what they do that I would like to adapt in my card making. So here I'm cutting it off, then I'm saving that printed section, tossing out the ends, same thing. Tossing out the ends, saving the printed section, because that's how I make my scrap cards. And actually I used a lot of those strips in here so far. There might not be enough for scrap cards when I get there. And here I'm not gluing things down yet because A, it was late in the evening at this point it was I don't know maybe nine or so kind of late for me so I was laying them out quick like a flash while I had the idea of how I wanted them all to go together and then I started looking at the stickers because I wanted to put my little kit together and go to bed and foam mount my stickers but then I realized I had a bunch of video to edit. So I didn't actually do those until the next morning when I was drinking my coffee. I put foam mount all over the back of them. And you'll see those will come in later. I didn't include the part where I put foam mount on all the stickers. And I tried not to include the part where I peeled the white backing off the foam mount either. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking at what scraps of paper do I have and what sentiments do I want to use. And I'm just mounting them on sizes that they fit on. And then I trim them down. You could take your stickers and put the foam mount directly on the back of them and put them on your card. It won't give it as much contrast and definition and it also won't be quite as sturdy. But after I used that foam mount a little bit I realized it's fairly thin and I have like a giant roll of it. So I, sturdiness isn't really an issue. But still, I kind of like the look of layering my stickers up a bit. And if I had some more solid papers that matched, I probably would have done more. But these are sort of unusual rose tones. They're not really pink. And in my craft room, there aren't a million papers to tie to this. So I took the tag, I put it, then I fussy cut it to emphasize the shape. And that orange thing is a... I think it's called a crocodile or crocodile too. I have it for journal making, but it's a nice hole punch too. It's not as big as a regular hole punch. It's a little more tidy looking. 
I didn't have tons of the string, so you'll see me fiddling with the string a lot in the video. I'll, I'm going to use it another time because I quadrupled it and it wasn't really long enough to use for the project because I was using scraps off the counter. So here, this is in the morning. I've had my coffee and foam mount, put foam mount on the back of those. And then I'm going to finish up this big one. Punch the hole in it. And I just hit it with my bone folder to make sure it was sleek down on the paper. And you'll see me, <laughs> you're probably thinking it's crazy. I'm switching adhesive a ton. Sometimes I have a favorite. Sometimes I just grab whatever is handy. I like art glitter glue if I'm trying to take a little piece of paper and line it up on something else. Because it gives you that moment to adjust it. And... I used for years Hermadotto, which is somewhere in this video too, and it would let you remove it and put it back on. I think maybe the Gina K rollers will, but I haven't really tested them. And when I was making a giant batch of cards, I didn't want to be fussing with that. So I like the art glitter glue for a little bit more forgiveness. That Tuesday morning adhesive on that white roll, if you stick it down and change your mind, it's over. You have to live with whatever it is. So foam mount is the same way. If you have foam mount and you stick it down, it's pretty much a done deal. Sometimes you can adjust. I think it might be this one. No, it was the pour some sugar on me one in a different spot where you can adjust a little if you haven't pushed it down. The only way to get forgiveness from foam mount is to put wet adhesive on it. Like right now, you peel off all the backing. Then you put some wet glue like art glitter glue on it. And you could jiggle it when you settle it, set it down. And then when it dries, it would harden up. But I skipped that step because it just takes longer. Here I'm fiddling around and trying to figure out what am I going to do with that big tag. Then I just decide I'm going to put it on a card without anything behind it. But this is why I'm fiddling with the string for so long. Because I don't really have enough. <laughs> but I'm going to make it work. It's also a very messy looking string, which I kind of like. I use a lot of embroidery floss because I have so much of it. And I have no idea what the source of this black twine looking stuff was, but I wanted to use it just because it was different. Maybe later in the cards I'll use embroidery floss in some color because I ran out. There you can see I did put the foam mount on there on camera. Sorry, Wilson keeps going in and out. And here... That was dull, right? It was just paper and I wasn't sure what to do with it. So I just took my corner rounder and put tiny rounds on the corner just to add a little bit of interest. I didn't really have or wasn't committed enough to find a piece of paper and add a solid tiny mat around it. This one I haven't glued together yet, but I'm trying to figure out how to make these really big cut aparts work nicely on a card and not be boring. So I was just looking at what came in the paper pack. Of course, if they had put that light blue that's in there in the paper pack, I really would have liked that. I would have used it to layer things up. I looked at this cup. It, it was just too much going on. I was trying to make it work with the other. So I decided to fussy cut it, which I almost never do. Fussy cutting is when you take your scissors and you fuss with it and cut the whole thing out. There you go. I did it. I played with it. Eh, I still haven't glued it down to anything. I'm still trying to figure it out. And then I decided the straw needed to be a tiny bit shorter. So when you cut stuff out, you can make that decision. That sticker says something about let's go to a new place for a coffee run. It was a more specific sticker. A lot of the other ones, like they say coffee makes everything great or pour some sugar on me, you know, from coffee, that kind of thing. I don't know. I don't know if I want to send a card to a friend that says, let's go find a new coffee shop. So I wasn't sure. And I didn't love the peach stripe in the background. I have a hard time cutting flags, you guys, even if I'm following something. It is not my thing. Okay, so here, sorry, I didn't edit this out. I got this giant roll at Expo and I hadn't used it until maybe a week or so ago. And now I'm having a great time. I zoomed in so that you could see better and it's going to take me a little while to figure out that I'm working too low, but you're going to get the idea. I'm using scraps and strips that are there and that one was a little wide so I trimmed it down 
and I alternate between making them the full height of that four inch section and the narrower, just the top layer. There's not a right or wrong. Here's a place where I'm fiddling with foam mount. I hadn't pushed it down and it let me lift it up a tiny bit to straighten it out. That's just about the only time you get to. You get about, if you had only put it halfway down and you look at it and it's crooked. And all I'm doing, do not think that there's a strategy or a math measurement or anything really scientific. I am literally looking at the pile of scraps off to my right, which I've done a pretty good job just putting them in there as I cut all those strips and grabbing a paper that matches that card base that I have and using it. That's it. So it's not a formula. It is finding something that matches. Like this one was the card the branding strip, but it still had the bit of white. So I tidied up the white and then I used it and that's it. So what I'm doing is I'm letting that pile of scraps give me the inspiration and say, Hey, use a half inch strip. Would I've liked it to be a little wider? Yeah, but it was okay. And maybe I should have grabbed a black and then matted it and layered it up. If you're making one card, that's great. If you're making a million, sometimes you just make and see how it all turns out. And we as crafters, we get picky and look at things and think, oh, I should have done that differently. But when you send your friend a coffee card, they're not going to look at it and be like, oh, you should have put a black black mat around that before you put it together. And I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with all these cards because I don't think I'm going to give out coffee gift cards so much. But that's an idea that somebody had for this collection. It would be a really neat way to thank employees or friends or like realtors thank customers to use this collection and give out coffee gift cards. So now I'm looking for a pink because my card bases are the Joanne, no, Michael's 110 pound and it is not a hundred percent as white as like an Echo Park white or a Nina solar white it it has just a hint of yellow in it so when I can I don't like a white paper to touch my card base and that's a little bit OCD but at the same time I also like to mat things anyway so I was looking for a pink mat or something in my stash that would work and part of it was I wanted them to be different so I didn't have enough of that pink paper for all of them but that was fine some of them I let the two whites that didn't really match touch but I don't think anyone will notice That black thing, that black adhesive roller is the Hermadotto and they were selling them at Tuesday morning and I think they're discontinued and I don't even know how to get refills anymore. So I'm a little broken hearted, but that was my absolute favorite tape runner because it was removable. So what I'm doing here in these cards that's weird is I'm using the white Tuesday morning adhesive to connect the pink and the white because I can throw those out if I mess up. And then I'm using the card front with the sentiment that I like and all the work I've done on it with the Hermadotto because I can pull it off if it goes on wrong or crooked. Does that make sense? And the reason I keep going down to the bottom of the mat is when you have a big puffy thing, that gives you room to work. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.